And Merry Christmas, everyone, boys and girls and grown-ups. I'm Tom Shirley with a friendly welcome from your telephone company. First, we have for you that familiar old story, "'Twas the Night Before Christmas with old Santa himself. And then we have the greatest story ever told, the Nativity, the story of the first Christmas in Bethlehem nearly 2,000 years ago. But before we begin, here's a friend of yours. Thank you. Here's your party, Mr. Back with us to old New York in the year 1822 to the home of Professor Clement Clark Moore, the man who wrote "Twas the Night Before Christmas, that wonderful story of St. Nick. about Christmas. They're wonderful, aren't they? The one I like best is about mistletoe. <laughs> you know, I'd like to see St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas? Santa Claus. Oh. Just as he used to call on Christmas Eve to visit the Dutch settlers and leave toys for the, for the good children. Darling, you are old-fashioned. Mm -hmm. This is 1822. We aren't settlers any longer. Besides, no one has ever seen St. Nicholas. You don't even know what he looks like. But you're wrong, Kitty. I do. He looks just like... just like Hans Jaeger. Old Hans Jaeger who drives our sleigh. <sighs> All blue-eyed and red-cheeked behind white whiskers. Fat and jolly, too. Just as Hans Jaeger is. I'd recognize Santa any day. Well, you old silly. You'd leave the doors open and the shutters unbarred for any stranger to walk in who might fancy he's a Christmas saint. Well, uh, he could come down the chimney. Never mind my nonsense, Kitty. Here's something from Santa straight from Paris. Oh, Clement! And uh, they tell me they're meant to show just oh. a little. Oh, I'll believe anything now. <laughs> there. That's for St. Nick. Perhaps he'll fill it tonight. Good night, Clemens. Don't be too late. The children will be up at dawn. was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads.
and Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap when out on the lawn there arose such a clatter I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles his coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky, so up to the housetop the coursers they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head, it was turning around. Down the chimney St. Nicholas came. With a bound. He was dressed all in red from his head to his foot. And his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard of his chin was as white as the snow. of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke, it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a round little belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right jolly old elf, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink of his eye, and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work and filled all the stockings.
filled all the stockings, he turned with a jerk, and laying a finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. <laughs> Play, to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew like the down of a thistle. But we heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. And that's how the story of the night before Christmas was written. In just a moment, you're going to see the greatest story of all. The Nativity, the story of the birth of the Christ child nearly 2,000 years ago. Now, for the greatest story of all, the Nativity. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. In the beginning, the voice of an angel spake unto Mary, saying, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt name him Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Yet there were other voices in the land. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And further, that all men should go to be taxed, every one into the city of his birth. And as the Roman soldiers proclaimed the law, the people of Nazareth listened with heavy hearts. For like Mary and her husband Joseph, there were many among them whose native cities were far distant. Indeed, the payment of this tax would be a burden to them all. Even the children stopped their play, and the elders watched in silent resentment as the soldiers withdrew. And then the people began to speak among themselves, will Caesar pay our losses? Or the cost of our journey? And the rabbis prayed, God deliver us from our enemies. Even so, Joseph, the gentle carpenter of Nazareth, spoke to Mary, telling her, it is the will of Caesar Therefore, let us prepare, and tomorrow begin our journey to Bethlehem. So it was that Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the distant city of David, which is called Bethlehem. And with him went Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. For many days they journeyed. The road was long and steep, and Mary became weary as they drew near to Bethlehem. But Joseph comforted her. And though she longed for the journey's end, she had no fear, for she remembered well the words which God had made known unto her. Refreshed, they hastened on. But night had fallen when at last they came to Bethlehem. 
Already the city was asleep and the inn was closed. Yet a light in the window above them gave Joseph hope that they might still find shelter. from his slumber, the innkeeper was angry. Why do you disturb honest people at this hour? And Joseph replied, We seek shelter, for we have traveled far, and my wife is weary. But the innkeeper cried down to them, There is no room here. Be gone. desperation, Joseph knocked again. And a beggar grumbled, go away. Leave me my corner in peace. But Joseph explained, my wife is with child. And the heart of the beggar was touched. There is a stable back of the inn. Cannot the manger be a crib for him who is to be born? And so it came about that Mary was to bring forth her firstborn son and lay him in a manger because there was no room for them at the inn. The stable was dark and barren, but within its sheltering walls, Mary and Joseph found refuge from the wind and the cold, and the sweet-smelling hay promised warmth and comfort after the long journey. Joseph spoke tenderly to Mary, lest she know the anxiety in his heart. And as he left to tether the animal, he bade her lie down to rest. Thus, while Joseph kept his vigil, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. For unto you is born this day in Bethlehem a Savior, who is Jesus Christ. And ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a heavenly host singing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Behold, there were all 
also three wise men who traveled from the east, and they were puzzled by a star they did not know, a star which shone brighter than any other. And one of them, who had studied the heavens, said to the others, Verily, this can only be the star of the Messiah, King of the Jews. Knowing this, the wise men hastened to Jerusalem and came before King Herod, saying, Where is he that is born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. And when he heard these things, the wily Herod was troubled and said, He is not here. But Herod was curious and called on the chief priests and scribes of the people, demanding to know where Christ should be born. Some had forgotten the prophecies, but one remembered and said unto him, He shall be born in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophets. Concealing his thoughts, Herod spoke again with the wise men and commanded that they go to Bethlehem, saying, Search diligently for the young child, and when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. And having paid homage to Herod the king, the wise men took their leave. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. And as they made their way, they received a warning from God not to return to Herod. Ever following the heavenly star, they went forward until it stood over where the young child was, and they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. For now, when they were come into the stable, they saw the child Jesus with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they presented unto him gifts gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The shepherds, too, led by the voice of the angel, looked on in silent wonder. And about them in the manger, and above them in the heavens that covered the earth, a host of angels sang, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. you've enjoyed our two Christmas stories as much as we've enjoyed presenting them to you. And now, all of us at your telephone company wish you a very Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year.